Have you ever seen a ghost? Do you really believe in ghost? Think about the playing of spirit game. Do you know what is spirit game? And have you ever welcomed any spirit to talk to you? Try once. Many people are there who will be trying this. I don't know whether they got success or not. Here we are going to see a story, a shady plot where the people see the spirit, the ghost directly and they even play spirit and welcome the dead people and they'll try to talk to the dead people. See, we'll, we are going to see in the story now how these all things are going to happen. So the storylines. So I sat down to write a ghost story. So the writer is telling like this, the writer sat down doing something. What is he doing? He is going to write a ghost story. Jenkins was responsible. So Jenkins is the person asked a writer to write a ghost story. Hallock, he had said to me. So what is the writer name here? He is Hallock. So who told to Hallock to write the story? It is Jenkins. Jenkins told Hallock to write a ghost story. And the way he addressed Hallock like this, what did he say? Hallock, he had said to me, give us another on the supernatural this time. Supernatural, the word, see here. Supernatural means which is not natural. Natural you know very well. The things which are not natural are supernatural. Just like as I have mentioned, have you ever seen a ghost? Have you ever tried to talk to a ghost? These all things are supernatural, which are not the ordinary things. Something to give them the horrors. That's what the public wants. And your ghosts are live propositions. So Jenkins told to Hallock like this, he's telling, this time we want you to write something on supernatural and there he did not stop not only supernatural something to give him the horrors horrors means fear horrors means fears something m to give horrors means the people the readers should get fear reading your supernatural story and your ghosts are live propositions. See here, something to give them um, the horrors that what the public wants. The public also prefer liking, the public also like to read horror uh, stories, something where there is some mystery, not soft and ordinary stories. That's what Jenkins is telling to Hallock to write a horror story because public like that very much. And your ghosts are life propositions. So what is life propositions? What is the meaning of the word life propositions? Means living persons. Living persons. So he should show the ghosts as living persons. Means lively. The story should be so lively. Well, I was in no position to contradict Jenkins. So here the writer Hallock is telling now. He is not in a position to contradict Jenkins. Why is, what is the meaning of the word contradict? Contradict means oppose. Oppose. So the writer is not in a position to contradict his master, means Jenkins. He is not in a position to oppose him. Why is he not in a position? That we will see now. His magazine had been the only one to print my stuff. So I had said precisely in the deepest voice I was capable of and had gone out. So what is the reason that he couldn't oppose Jenkins, Hallock couldn't oppose Jenkins? Because he is, his magazine is the only magazine which is printing, in which his stuff is being printed. So other than that he doesn't have any other source as he's a writer. See every writer it is a very common thing that whenever they write anything they want that to be published in some newspaper or some magazine. So as Hallock is also a writer here he is also expecting the same. He needs some magazine or something in which his writings should be 
published so as it is the only magazine in which his writings can be published he doesn't have any other option that is the reason why he couldn't oppose to jenkins and precisely so precisely he accepted precisely means exactly so he said like this so i had said precisely in the deepest voice i was capable of and had gone out it means exactly he said i am capable of writing ghost stories telling like this he left the place and went away i hadn't the shade of an idea see he readily accepted hallock readily accepted the proposal but he doesn't have any stuff in his mind he is not prepared there is no idea which story he is going to write then but at the time that didn't worry me in the least even though he doesn't have any idea in his mind he did not bother it he did not worry about that you see i had often been like that before and in the end things had always come my way i didn't in the least know how or why so what is he telling why he least bothered about that because he doesn't have any idea about any of the story which he is going to write even though he doesn't have idea he readily accepted for the proposal why previously also number of times it happened in the same way to him but finally he had come with an extraordinary outcome extraordinary work so this time also okay maybe even now i don't have any idea if once i sit and start writing definitely i'll get idea is the confidence what the writer has in his mind that is the reason he readily accepted the proposal and he least bothered about having no idea what he is going to write and even he mentioned how is it happening even though without any idea he sits and start writing but ultimately the final work used to be extraordinary so he doesn't know how is it happening but previously it happened like that that is the reason why he is so much of confident now to sit and write a ghost story without having any idea it had all been rather mysterious means for him it is mysterious because if we have to do something we need to have some ideas in our mind without having any idea he started doing the work he started doing the work and it is coming in an extraordinary way so how is it happening like that it is a big mystery for him also for hallock also mystery means full of mysterious means full of mystery you understand i didn't specialize in ghost stories but more or less they seemed to specialize in me see here how twisted the sentence is did you understand once again i'm going to read this for you a ghost story had been the first fiction i had written see here you understand i didn't specialize in ghost stories he is not a very great specialist in writing the ghost stories he doesn't have any specialization in that but more or less they seemed to specialize in me but what is he telling the writer now he is telling that more or less they are the ghost stories are within him they got specialized in him so because why he is making such a sentence see the next sentence a ghost story had been the first fiction i had written so in his life till now he had written many writings and the first fiction in his life is a ghost story that is the reason now to write another ghost story he has that much of confidence curious how that idea for a plot had come to me out of no nowhere nowhere after i had chased inspiration in vain for months even now whenever jenkins wanted a ghost he called on me so first time when he wrote for so many months he sat he thought and finally he gave an extraordinary work and even now whenever this magazine owner jenkins whenever he want any ghost story he used to call a writer hallock and i had never found it healthy to contradict jenkins Jenkins always seemed to have an uncanny knowledge as to when the landlord or the grocer was pestering me and he dunned me for a ghost 
and somehow I had always been able to dig one up for him. So I had begun to get a bit cocky as to my ability. So this person means whenever he writes a story, whenever it gets published in the magazine, he used to get some money which will be useful for him. So as it is good for him, he never tried to contradict with Jenkins. He never, he is not dare enough to do that because he is getting some work from him for which he will be paid. That is the reason whenever Jenkins means he is a bit strange person. Whenever he needs anything, he will just ring him up and ask him to write a ghost story. And till now, whenever Jenkins asked Hellock like that, he is able to write the story very nicely. So this time also, these all are the reasons for which Hellock readily accepted the proposal of Jenkins. So I went home and sat down before my desk and sucked at the end of my pencil and waited but nothing happened so here the word meaning sucked so what this writer did so he went to his home sat near the desk and absorbed having a pencil in his hand he got absorbed in his thoughts totally he got absorbed in his thoughts but even though he was sitting and thinking like that nothing happened Pretty soon, my mind began to wander off on other things. Decidedly, unghostly and material things such as my wife's shopping and how on earth I was going to cure her of her alarming tendency to take every new fad that came along and work it to death. So here... So he was sitting actually, he, he came back home, he sat and he is supposed to write a ghost story. He sat there and he was totally absorbed in some thoughts. He is thinking how he should start a story, what the plot, plot of the story should be. So like this he is thinking but he is not at all getting any idea. Other than getting idea, he is getting some more material things in his mind. So what is the material thing he is getting about the shopping tendency of his wife? Whenever she find anything new in the market, even though it is useful or not, she will just purchase it. It is her great tendency. So he started thinking, what can I do to stop this tendency what my wife has so he started thinking such material things rather than getting an idea about the ghost story which he is supposed to write but i realized that, that would never get me any place so i went back to staring at the ceiling so what he did he understood these all are waste thoughts it is time waste to think about those all things so he tried to stop all those thoughts in his mind and very keenly he started looking into the ceiling ceiling means top of the room he started looking into the ceiling very keenly so that he can get some idea about the plot of the story which he is supposed to write this writing business is delightful isn't it I said sarcastically at last, out loud too. You see, I had reached the stage of imbecility when I was taking to myself. So here when he is looking into that ceiling, still he is trying to get some thoughts. As he is not getting any thought, he is thinking in himself like this. This writing business is delightful, isn't it? Means in a sarcastic way. For a writer, it is not that easy to put all the thoughts, whatever he gets on a paper. Because of the thoughts, whatever we get, it doesn't mean that they will be in a proper order. Getting a story, a plot, making that into a proper order, presenting that properly. These all are not that easy tasks. So, sarcastically means in a satirical way, he is telling that writing business is not that easy. So, you see, I had reached the stage of imbecility so here the word the meaning of the word imbecility is foolishness so he reached to the stage of foolishness when he was talking to himself he is sitting all alone there he is thinking to do something as he is not getting any idea he started talking to himself which he considered it as a foolishness. Yes, said a voice at the other end of the room. 
I should say it is. See, it is a very big shocking. See, when you are sitting in a room all alone, preparing for an exam, you close the door. You know very well that no other person is there in the room. All of a sudden, you heard a voice back of you, one person standing behind you and spoke to you. How do you feel? Don't you feel frightened? Because you already knew that the door is locked. No one is there in the room except you. But you heard a voice very closely, very near to you. How do you feel? The same way here, see? Yes, said a voice at the other end of the room. From the other end of the room. He did not see any person. But a voice came telling yes. He didn't. So he got shocked now. I should say it is. So the voice told like this. I should say it is. I admit I jumped. Then I looked around. So when he heard such a strange voice, he stood up from his place and he looked around the room. Means all the directions of the room. It was twilight. Twilight, twilight means not the original light which we get from the sun. The lighting what we get, the lights and all, uh, electrified lights and all. So that light is called twilight. It was twilight by this time and I had forgotten to turn on the lamp. So afternoon he came back home. He sat to write something. From then onwards he was sitting there and thinking. So the time became evening and it became dark outside. And he had forgotten to switch on the light because he got deeply involved in the thoughts of writing a ghost story. The other end of the room was full of shadows and furniture. So, one side he is sitting. On the other side, he can see as it is dark from outside life, he can see the shadows of some furniture. I sat staring at it and presently noticed. So, he was sitting there itself and he started staring. Means he was looking into that images of furniture and all. Suddenly, he noticed something there. Presently noticed something just taking shape. He noticed that something is taking shape of the, out of that shades. It was exactly like watching one of these moving pictures, cartoons being put together. So how is that uh, shape making is? It is as if we put all the cartoons together. How it will be like that the shape is. First an arm came out. So how is it making the shape first? One, he, saw, he saw one arm, one arm came out. Then a bit of sleeve of a stiff white shirt waist. Then a leg and a plaid skirt. Until at last there was, there she was complete. Like that see, one, once he, he saw the arm, next sleeves, next waist. Finally he is able to see a complete figure it is a lady whoever she was he doesn't know who is she how she came but in front of him when he is seeing she appeared means part ways all not all at the at a time first he saw the hand next leg next waist like that part wise she appeared in front of him she was long and angular with enormous fishy eyes behind big bone rimmed spectacles and had eight in a tight wad at the back of her head. Yes, I see, able to see right through her head and a jaw. Well, it looked so solid that for the moment I began to doubt my very own senses and believe she was real after all. So now when the complete structure is made, he felt that as if a real person is standing in front of him. So he is not understanding. He even doubted his uh, senses. He got a doubt. Even though the picture got appeared part wise, he got a doubt that the real person came and stood before him. She came over and stood in front of me and glared. Yes. Positively glared down at me, although to my knowledge, I had never laid eyes on the women before to say nothing of giving her cause to look at me like that. So finally, the, when the complete figure is made, the lady came close to him and looking at him directly. 
I sat still, feeling pretty helpless. I can tell you. And at last she barked. What are you gapping at? Gapping means looking with open mouth. So he, he did not understand what to talk. See a lady, it's a closed room where he was sitting. So he did not see that lady previously who appeared in front of him part wise and came to him and looking at him. So he did not understand what to do. He just opened his mouth and looking at the lady like anything. So she finally came near to this hello and she shouted at him telling what are you gapping at means what are you looking at opening your mouth. I swallowed thought I hadn't been chewing anything so he he immediately closed his mouth he swallowed something nothing i said absolutely nothing my dear lady i was merely waiting for you to tell me why you had come so finally he said nothing 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 is there i'm just waiting to know the reason why you have come here so he asked the lady to tell the reason why she came there at that time and excuse me, but do you always come in sections like this? Should think your parts might get mixed up sometimes. And he's telling that. So excuse me for asking like this. Do you have the habit of coming like this part wise? So if you come like this one or the other time, if your parts get mixed up, it will be a problem. Didn't you send for me? She crisped. Crisped means spoke with liveliness. So what she said? You only send a message to me, calling me to come here. Imagine how I felt at that time. The writer, see, because he did not send such a message to anyone. Because he doesn't know who is the lady. For the first time, he is seeing the lady who came in front of her and telling that you send me a message. That's why I came here. So imagine the condition of the writer there. Why no? I, I don't seem to remember. So he is in total confusion. Hallock is in total confusion now. He is telling that he is just he is trying to recollect something in his mind. But he is telling that I don't remember anything. Look here. Haven't you been calling on heaven and earth all afternoon to help you write a story? So the lady is asking him like this. See all afternoon looking at heaven and earth you were calling someone to help you to write a story you didn't call so like that the lady questioned the writer i nodded so he is of course sitting and waiting to get some idea so he nodded he said he shaked his head and then a possible explanation occurred to me and my spine got cold so now he is so he is so shivering he is out of fear he is feeling so fearsome now he he came down when the girl gave the reason why she came so she when she told that reason he became cold. Suppose this was the ghost of a stenographer applying for a job. I had had an advertisement in the paper recently. I opened my mouth to explain that the position was filled and permanently so. But she stopped me. So he was still thinking that maybe I might have given a newspaper ad for a stenographer and he wanted to tell that the post is already filled permanently. Before he say that the ghost, the lady stopped him. And when I got back to the office from my last case and was ready for you, didn't you switch off to something else and sit there driveling so I couldn't attract your attention until just now? I am very sorry, really. So the lady, immediately the lady spoke to him telling that I came from my office to attend you. But unfortunately, your thoughts got changed. That's why till now I couldn't reach you. I long back I came. I thought of coming to you and telling a story. But as you are thinking something else, I couldn't reach you. Immediately this man is telling sorry for that. Because he has, he, his thoughts got changed. We have already discussed about it. How his thoughts got changed. In the middle he was thinking about the material things about his wife and the other things so he, for that Hallock said sorry he's telling like this i'm very sorry really he said sorry to that lady well you needn't be because i just came to tell you to stop bothering us for assistance 
you are going to get it we are going on strike so the lady told to the writer like this so i came here to tell you that you are not going to get any support from us and why she is telling that they are not going to he is not going to get any support because these people are going on a strike what the writer questioned the writer did not understand what this lady is telling you don't have to l at me i i didn't mean to l i said humbly but i'm afraid i didn't quite understand you you said you were going on strike don't you know what a strike is not another plot do you get from us i stared at her and wet my lips is is that where they have been coming from of course we are else but my ghosts aren't bit like you if they were people wouldn't believe in them she dropped herself on the top of my desk among the pens and ink bottles and leaned towards me in the other life i used to write so she is telling finally she is telling please don't bother us because we are not going to come and assist you previously also this man without having any idea used to sit and write he used to get some idea in the mind and he used to finish off his work we are going on a strike so when she made this sentence the man got shocked he said what he couldn't understand because see he doesn't know that lady previously he is unable to believe he has a doubt that she is a ghost and he got a doubt how the ghosts can go on a strike these many doubts he had in his mind so she quest she told him don't l on me don't shout at me he said no no humbly i am asking why are you going for a strike i couldn't understand what happened like that he asked she is telling don't you know what is a strike so she questioned the writer telling like this and he, she is also telling that now she came here to tell if they were people wouldn't believe in them she dragged herself on the top means she came near to him she lay sat on the table near the pens and ink bottles and she is talking to him directly and she is telling like this in the other life i used to write so she started telling about her life in the other life what she used to do she is telling that she was a writer in other life you did she nodded so he questioned you did writing so she nodded she shaked her head telling yes but that has nothing to do with my present form it might have but i gave it up at last for that very reason and went to work as a reader on a magazine she sighed and dropped the end of her no long eagle nose with a reminiscent finger those were terrible days the memory of them made me mistake purgatory for paradise and at last when i attained my present stage of being i made up my mind that something should be done so previously she used to write after that she started reading the magazines when she is there in another life but in the present life she made her mind so instead of sitting and writing she thought of helping others those who are not getting any idea to write so i found others who had suffered similarly and between us we organized the writers inspiration bureau see maybe you might have heard about marriage bureau and all in the same way these ghosts who have become who are the writers and they have become the ghosts so what they have come to a conclusion all together they formed into one bureau what is that the writers inspiration bureau so this bureau what they will do they will help the people who are not getting any idea to sit and write something on one subject we scout around until we find a writer without ideas and with a mind soft enough to accept impression the case is brought to the attention of the main office and one of the assigned to it when that case is finished 
we bring in a report see here they formed into a bureau what they will do whenever they find a person a writer who is sitting to write something but not getting the idea one of them will go and assist the person give some suggestions to the person and when once the work is completed they will submit report back to their bureau but i never saw you before and you wouldn't have this time so but this man is telling previously i never saw you previously you never helped me so this man got a doubt because this lady is telling that whenever you get the problem i'm coming and helping you like that she told so this man is telling previously i have never seen you and you wouldn't have this time if i hadn't come to announce the strike so the lady is telling like this this time also you should you should wouldn't have seen me but now i came to tell you that we are on we are going on a strike that is the reason we are not giving any idea to you many a time i have leaned on your shoulder when you have thought you were thinking hard i groaned and clutched my head the very idea of that horrible scare scrow so much as touching me and wouldn't my wife be shocked shivered but she continued that's at an end we have been called out of our beds a little too often in recent years and now we are through so here she is telling you no know, so many number of times when you are sitting and thinking like this i came i sat beside you i leaned on your shoulder i touched your hair like that she was telling what all the things happened previously but he is telling that he doesn't know anything and she said we have helped you number of times but now we have come through that because now we are going to not to help you but my dear madam i assure you i have had nothing to do with that i hope i am properly grateful and all that you see ho oh, it isn't you she ex explained patronizingly it's those oja board so here as you know very well we are seeing the discussion between the narrator and one lady who appeared all of a sudden there and already the narrator understood that it is none other than a ghost so the ghost explained so many things about the strike what they are going to conduct and all this man clearly stated that he is no way connected to that and here now the lady started exp explained so what is she explaining here she patronizingly patronizing me le means supporting in a narrow minded so the lady is supporting that in a narrow mindedness supporting worth and supporting patronizingly she is supporting it's those oja board so i think to what extent you students know about oja board so how many of you have played the spirit game i don't know but if you have such experience people will sit with a board where they'll put one coin and they'll put the fingers on the coin and they will move the coin towards the alphabets what all written on the board the words what they pick up they feel that it is a message given by the spirit to them so this game is played on a board named oja board fanatics so there was a time when we had nothing much to occupy us and used to haunt a little on the side purely for amusement so when these ghosts when these spirits have nothing to do they simply used to haunt haunt means going here and they are going to a particular place without any break they used to do that only because of amusement means for the purpose of entertainment we have had to give up haunting almost entirely we sit at a desk and answer questions now so now what the spirit is telling what the ghost previously they used to haunt here and there means they used to roam here and there for the purpose of amusement but now these ghosts have also become very busy they are sitting in one place near a desk and they started answering the questions asked by different people and such questions she shook her head 
hopelessly and taking off her glasses wiped them and put them back on her nose again so she is telling see she is giving expressions also here the ghost not simply talking see i think many of you have the habit of watching movies do you watch movie so generally if you have the habit of watching movie just imagine any scene from your favorite favorite movie they were a doctor is coming out of a operation theater and expressing their regret what they will do generally in the movies how they will show just the doctor will remove the spectacles by cleaning their spectacles slowly they will express their view about the patient whether it is hopefulness or hopelessness here also the ghost so what is the expression she is giving here she is telling that we'll answer the questions of different people sitting near a desk she while telling about this she removed her specs and she started cleaning the specs and she was telling we'll answer such questions she gave a great expression there while mentioning about different types of questions they answer but what have i got to do with this she gave me a pitying look and rose so she removed her specs by cleaning she said different types of questions we answer telling like that she kept her specs again on the nose and this man questioned her what did he question but what have i got to do with this so the man is asking what should i do with that what is your job why are you telling me why are you explaining me what am i going to do with your job this is a very big question what the man got on his mind and he is asking the lady what should i do with your job what am i going to do with your job she gave me a pitying look and rose so she gave a pitiful look towards the man when he questioned like this you are to exert your influence get all your friends and acquaintances to stop using the ouija board and then we'll start helping you to write so immediately she's telling she gave one advice to the man what did she say you ought to exert what is the meaning of the word exert here e x e r t exert means put so you have to put your influence you should use your influence so for what purpose this man is supposed to use his influence get all your friends and acquaintances to stop using the ouija board so she is telling that you call all your friends and even the acquaintance means the people whom you know very well ask them to stop using the ouija board and then we'll start helping you to write so this um, lady has asked a favor to the man what is she asking you do one favor to us the people who are calling using the ouija board ask them not to call us as we are becoming very busy because whenever they call we have to come to that place we have to roam we have to haunt that place so if we if they no one call us using the ouija board we'll be sitting in one place near a desk and we'll start answering the questions asked by different people so the help what you have to do is is to ask all your friends and acquaintances means the people whom you know very well to stop using the board then simultaneously i will help you in your writing this is the proposal kept by the lady ghost to the narrator but there was a footstep outside my door so when the lady is telling like that all of a sudden the narrator heard some footsteps outside the door that means he heard that someone is coming towards the room john oh john called the voice of my wife so who is the coming towards the room it is none other than the wife of the narrator so how is she coming calling john oh john I waved my arms at the ghost with something of the motion of a beginner when learning to swim. So immediately, you know very well. See, the here the ghost is a lady. Only the narrator and ghost are there in the room. And who is coming towards the room there? The narrator's wife. And the narrator doesn't want his wife to see one lady in his room. That's why immediately he started waving the hand towards the ghost, 
asking her to hide somewhere so he is waving the comparison happened here the way he waves his hand is compared to the person the beginner who is learning to swim initially when you are learning to swim how you try to wave your hands in the same way this man also waved his hand as if he is a beginner of a swimming he is a beginner to learn the swimming like that he waved his hand towards the ghost just indicating her to hide herself why the narrator want the lady ghost to hide here because as his wife is coming over there and he doesn't want his wife to see one more lady in his room madam i must ask you to leave and at once consider the impression if you were seen here so immediately after the signal he started directly asking the lady to disappear from that place right once immediately and he doesn't want anyone to see this lady there in his room the ghost nodded and began very sensibly i thought to demobilize and evaporate first the brogans on her feet grew misty until i could see the floor through them then the affection spread to her knees and gradually extended upward by this time my wife was opening the door so what happened when this man requested the lady ghost to disappear the ghost nodded her head she accepted and began so she started disappearing as you know very well how she appeared there all of a sudden she did not appear part twice part she appeared there means all the body parts did not come at a time slowly first one few parts of her body appear next few parts like that part twice she appeared there now also disappearing also started in the same way i thought to demobilize and evaporate means he thought that to dissolve to evaporate completely first the brogans means the ankles will disappear on her feet grew misty until i could see the floor through them so on her feet the mist got appeared as it became very transparent that he is able to see the floor through his feet through her feet then the affection means here affection means condition state of being affected spread to her knees means slowly from the feet the affect means the way of disappearing came near her knees and gradually extended upwards means from bottom slowly she started disappearing by this time my wife was opening the door so what how is he explaining the disappearance of the lady goes there from downward slowly she started disappearing and when this disappearance moved towards mean up in up direction by that time already the narrator's wife came near and she is about to open the door don't forget the strike she repeated while her lower jaw began to disintegrate and as my lavinia crossed the room to me and last vestige of her ear faded into space so before the disappear before getting disappeared the ghost she asked the man not to forget about the strike and slowly her face also got disappeared by this time the narrator's wife and what is the name of the narrator mentioned here it is my lavinia lavinia is the name of the narrator's wife she entered the room by the time she entered so everything got disappeared into space john why in the world are you sitting in the dark so the wife immediately after immediately after entering into the room she questioned her husband why are you sitting in the dark at this time because see he did not switch on the light it is already mentioned at the beginning of the story that he did not switch on the light this lady appeared and from then onwards he got involved in the discussion with the ghost lady so he is sitting in the dark as this lady means the narrator's lady uh, came there into the room she did not find any other person there she saw only her husband so she questioned him what did she question john why in the world are you sitting in the dark she questioned john why are you sitting all alone in the dark like this 
just thinking my dear so when his wife entered the room and questioned him what in the world made him sit all alone in the dark he just gave a reply to his wife telling that he is just sitting and thinking something thinking rubbish you were talking out loud so here this lady is so alert so she is telling thinking rubbish don't lie to me i heard you talking aloud I remained silent while she lit the lamps thankful that her back was turned to me so this man he knew that he was talking aloud and he knew that he is talking to a lady and he doesn't want his wife to know that so he remained calm he did not give any reply because as his wife had already heard that this man is talking so that confidently she mentioned that this man is talking loud in the room sitting all alone so he don't want to create it as a problem that's why he remained calm and he is thanking god that the wife stood her back towards this man so that she cannot see the facial expressions of the narrator when i am nervous or excited there is a muscle in my face that starts to twitch and this pulls up one corner of my mouth and gives the appearance of an idiotic grin so far i had managed to conceal this affection affliction from lavinia so this man had a problem the narrator so whenever he is so excited or nervous there is a muscle in his face which pulls one side of his mouth so that as la means it, it it gives a different idiotic grin grin means it's a smile laughing foolishly is a grin which gives which won't look good means for the people other people to look into his face it won't look until then he was trying to conceal hide this nature means this behavior what he had from his wife and now he had fear so that's why he's thanking god so that his wife is turning to other side you know i bought the loveliest thing this afternoon everybody is wild over them so the wife is telling as it is already mentioned by the narrator earlier that she has a habit of purchasing everything she spends money lavishly for purchasing all the new things what all appear in the market so the same nature we can see here what the narrator's wife is mentioning here she is telling you know i bought the loveliest thing this afternoon she is telling see whatever she purchased that is the loveliest thing for her she likes it very much that's why she spends money on unnecessary things also in the point of view of her narrator but that lady she will never consider like that so she is mentioning that she has purchased a loveliest thing everybody is wild over them she is also mentioning that everybody likes this thing very much i remembered her craze for taking up new fads and a premonitory chill crept up the back of my neck as this man is very well versed with the nature of the lady she he understood it it isn't i began and stopped i smiled couldn't ask the possibility was too horrible you would never guess in the world it's the duckiest darling is ouija board and so cheap i got it at a bargain sale why what's the matter john so this man he doesn't want to go into any sort of argument with his wife but she is not stopping she is going on telling she is telling that she has purchased a ouija board for at the cheaper rate <coughs> i felt things slipping now he understood see what happened the previous lady ghost the lady spirit what is it asking him not to use the ouija board and not to allow any of his friend and the people whom he knew very well make them not to use the ouija board but what his wife is telling here that she has purchased the board as she is getting it for the cheaper rate nothing i said and looked around for the ghost suppose she had lingered and upon hearing what my wife had said should suddenly appear like all sensitive women lavinia was subject to hysterics means sudden outburst of emotions this man he got fear he started fearing as if 
by listening to the words said by his wife is the ghost came back means reappeared so he is looking around to see whether he can see the ghost again because already the ghost gave a warning to him not to use the boat and his wife came there and she mentioned about the same boat there but you looked so funny i i always do when i am interesting i gulped but don't you think that was a foolish thing to buy so finally he was dare enough to mention that it is a foolish thing to buy such a board foolish oh john foolish and after me getting it for you for me what do you mean so she is telling foolish why are you considering it as a foolish i purchased the oja board for you so this narrator did not understand now for me for what purpose you have purchased in what way i can use the board is a question arised in the mind of the narrator to help you write your stories <coughs> see how concerned the wife is she knew that his her husband is a great writer and he'll be suffering a lot whenever he writes the new story so to help him she purchased this board now she is explaining the reason behind her purchasing the oves a board why for instance suppose you wanted to write an historical novel you wouldn't have to wear your eyes out over those musty old books in the public library all you would have to do would be to get out your oza and talk to napoleon or william the conqueror or helen of troy well maybe not helen anyhow you would have all the local color you would need and without a speck of trouble and think how easy writing your short stories will be now see how concerned the wife is she is telling that why she has purchased that oves a board she is giving an advice to her husband telling that next time whenever you sit to write historical stories no need to run your eyes to the musty old books to collect the essence of the stories instead of doing that you just take out the board oves a board and call some great conqueror or some king and from then you collect the story and you can write your stories very easily without any problem that is the reason why i purchased this board for you see how smart is the narrator's wife very apt explanation she gave and the reason behind purchasing the oves a board is very apt in her point of view but lavinia you surely don't believe in oza's boards so he is telling that how can you believe such things you shouldn't believe such board i don't know john they are awfully thrilling so she is telling that no no they are really greatly so much of thrill is there behind the board she had seated herself on the arm of my chair and was looking dreamily across the room i start as started and turned around there was nothing there i sank back with relief so far so good so telling like this she sat on the arm of a chair and she was looking around the room immediately this man got frightened she also he also looked around the room thinking that if the ghost had reappeared or not and when he observed that no one else is there in the room he also took some comfort he also got relaxed ho oh, certainly they are thrilling all right that's just it they are a dance sight too thrilling they are positively devilish no lavinia you have plenty of sense and i want you to get rid of that thing just as soon as you can take it back and get something else so now he got relaxed and he is trying to convince his wife as you all very well know that this man he doesn't want to use that over the board considering the instructions what he received from the lady ghost so what is he telling now who oh, certainly they are thrilling all right he also accepted he is just pretending as if he has gone in gone into his wife's way so he said yes it is thrilling that's just it they are done sight too thrilling he is telling that uh, yes it is very much thrilling the sight of the board itself is very much thrilling they are positively devilish means it is so 
of devilish means devil type things what they will do now lavinia you have plenty of sense i want you to get rid of that thing so he's telling so you are a sensible person you have plenty of sense so now what i want you to do you should get rid of that ovuza board take it back and get something else so he gave a suggestion to his wife telling that you return the board back to them and take something else instead of that ovuza board my wife crossed her knees and stared at me through narrowed lids john hallock she said distinctly i don't propose to do anything of the kind so she got a bit of anger so she got angry and she's telling that john elock i'm not going to do anything what you are telling me in the first place they won't exchange things bought at a bargain sale and in the second if you aren't interested in the other world i am so she gave two reasons why she doesn't want to exchange the board the first reason what she mentioned here the place where bargain things are sold they don't take it back means there is no question of exchanging the bargained things and the other thing is she is telling to her husband if you are not interested in the other well i am very much interested so there and she slid down and walked from the room before i could think of a single thing to say she walked very huffily huffily means in a bad temper so here the word so huffily means the word gives in a bad temper she moved from the room with a bad temper so she did not give any chance to her husband to think and say a single sentence she said what she want she had in his in her mind and she moved from that place in a bad temper well it was like that all the rest of the evening just as soon as i mentioned ovza boards i felt things began to cloud up so i decided to let let it go for the present in the hope that she might be more reasonable later so that evening the whole evening they were in that mood only he does he did not mention anything he said okay let the things go on after some time she can understand the she can think in a reasonable way considering like that he remained calm after supper i had another try at the writing but as my mind continued a perfect blank i gave it up and went off to bed so after the supper supper is the last meal of a day evening time they will take so the people will have their supper after the supper he sat again to write something but his mind is totally blank that he did not get any new idea finally he gave up the task of writing and he went to bed the next day was saturday and it began near the end of the month and a particularly busy day i left home early without seeing lavinia understand i haven't quite reached the point where i can give my whole time to writing and being bookkeeper for a lumber company does help with the grocery bills and pay for lavinia's fancy shopping so as the next day is a saturday fridays they will have only half days this man is working with a lumber company means it's a timber so he is working as a bookkeeper in a timber company so he will get means at least the money what he earns he can pay the bills of lavinia shopping and all friday had been a half holiday and of course when i got back the work was piled up pretty high so high in fact that ghosts and stories and everything else vanished in a perfect tangle of figures so as friday they have half day holiday saturday by the time he come to his office there is a lot of work for him to do so all the ghost stories everything got vanished from his mind so that he got involved in his work so much when i got off the street car that evening my mind was still churning churning means producing by the evening when he started back he got into the car and still his mind is thinking 
I remember now that I noticed, even from the corner, how brightly the house was illuminated. But at the time that didn't mean anything to me. I recall as I went up the steps and opened the door, I murmured, 9 times 9 in 81. So, here, see, by the time he reached his house, it's totally illuminated, means so much of lighting, everything is there. He did not make it a note. He went there, he knocked the door, and nine times is counting 81. And then, Gladolia met me in the hall. So, Gladolia is the servant maid. She came and she met him in the hall. Mr. Hallock, D. Mrs. Shu think you has lost. She says she done phone you this morning to be home early, but for the Lord's sake, not to stop to argify. Now, but get ready for the company and come on down. So she is telling the message what is left to him by his wife, by his wife. So the servant maid is telling that today morning she called your wife called you asking you to come to home early. So in a bit slang way she mentioned these sentences some memory of a message given me by one of the clerks filtered back through my brain but i had been haunting three lost receipts at the time and had completely forgotten it so when the servant man mentioned about the message left by his wife that day morning the clerk brought that to his notice but at that time this man is very busy in searching the three receipts which he lost in the office so in that mode the message got totally vanished from his mind he has totally forgotten the message what is left by his wife company i said stupidly what company the mrs ojua board party said gladolia and rolled her eyes she disappeared in the direction of the kitchen so company means she, he did not understand so there is a, some party in his house and he did not make a note of that so servant maid said that it is the oza board's party telling like that she went into the kitchen i must have gone upstairs and dressed and come down again for i presently found myself standing in the dimly lighted lower hall wearing my second best suit and a fresh shirt and collar but I have no recollections of the process. Finally, he went into his room. He, he dressed himself in the best, one of the best suits what he has. And he reappeared there. There was a great chattering coming from our little parlor. And I went over the half open door and peered through. So, from one of the room, he is uh, hearing a lot of chattering, means talking. So finally he went near there and he peered, looked into the half of the open door. He looked inside. The room, the room was full of women, most of them elderly, whom I recognized as belonging to my wife's book club. So when he peered into the room, he observed that the room is completely filled with the women and they are also from the book club of his wife. They were sitting in couples and between them, Couple was a Oza board. So how the people in the room are sitting? They are sitting in couple. Pairwise they are sitting. And in between them there is a Oza board. The mournful squeak of the legs of the moving triangle things. On which they rested their fingers. Filled the air and mixed in with the conversation. Since there is a board. A triangle way. They are keeping their fingers on the board and they are sitting there and they got involved in a deep conversation. I looked around for the ghost with my heart sunk down to zero. What if Lavinia should see her and go mad before my eyes and then my wife came and tapped me on the shoulder. When he saw these all people sitting like that, immediately he searched for the ghost around, imagining if his wife sees the ghost what the behavior in what way she behaves when he is imagining like that one hand tapped him on the shoulder he is none other than his wife john she said in her sweetest voice and i noticed that her cheeks were very pink and her eyes very bright my wife is never so pretty as when she is doing something she knows i disapprove of john dear i know you'll help us out Mrs. William Augustus, 
Wainwright phoned at the last moment to say that she couldn't possibly come. And that leaves poor Laura Hinkle without a partner. Now, John, I know some people can work a OZA by themselves, but Laura can't. She will just have a horrible time unless you. So finally, the narrator's wife came to him and she's looking so pretty with a good smile on her face. So whenever she appears, see, whenever the narrator's wife knew that she is doing something which her husband doesn't like, she tried to pretend, means she tried to influence him. So then only she appears so pretty. When this man is thinking like that, immediately the narrator's wife mentioned to him, requesting him to give the company to one of the lady as the another lady who should be the company to the present lady dropped at the last moment. So she requested her husband to give the company to the lady who is waiting there. Me, I gasped, me won't. But even as I spoke, she had taken my arm and the next thing I knew was sitting with the thing on my knees and Mrs. Laura Hinkle opposite grinning in my face like a flirtatious crocodile. So here, he, as he is telling no, she took him and made him sit there with the other lady and he is in the place to play the oves or board with the other lady. I, I won't, I began. Now, Mr. Hallock, don't you be shy. Mrs. Laura Henkel leaned forward and shook a bony finger almost under my chin. I am not only. I say I won't. No, it's very easy, really. You just put the tips of your fingers right here beside the tips of my fingers. And the first thing I know, she had taken my hands and was coyly holding them in the position desired. She released them presently and the little boat began to slide around in an aimless sort of way. There seemed to be some force tugging it about. I looked at my partner first with suspicion and then with a vast relief. So before he could realize what is happening there, his wife took him and made him sit with the lady and the lady requested him that it is not that difficult. So the lady herself took the hand of the person and made him put his finger near the tip of her finger and they started playing. When he could realize, before he could realize, the game started there. The boat started moving. The coin started moving there. If she was doing, so he did not understand. Without applying any force, the coin is being moved. He thought that someone might have given, uh, applying the force. Then all that talk about spirits. Oh, I did hope. Mrs. Laura Hinkle was cheating with the board he is thinking that without applying any force how the coin moves he is thinking that this mrs laura is cheating the board oza dear won't you tell us something she coined and on the instant the thing seemed to take life so immediately she started requesting the board to tell something so then this man realized that the thing started taking life it rushed to the upper left hand corner of the board and hovered with its front leg on the word yes. Then it began to fly around so fast that I gave up any attention to follow it. My companion was bending forward and had started to spell out loud. T-R-A-I-T-O-R Traitor means anti-nation. Why? What does she mean? So before he could realize or before the narrator could pay any attention, the coin started moving, the boat started moving towards yes. And from there, one after the another letter, it, got, it got started showing. And finally, the word came. What are the letters mentioned here? T-R-A-I-T-O-R means traitor. The meaning of the word is anti-nation. So it started and what is the meaning? What is the meaning of that? She questioned. I don't know. I said desperately. My collar felt very tight. But she must mean something. Oza dear, won't you explain yourself more fully? 
so she questioned what is that and this man replied that he doesn't know anything and he started sweating by that time so immediately the lady questioned the board itself to explain that fully a s k h i m ask him ask who oza i i am going i choked and tried to get up but my fingers seemed stuck in that dreadful board and i dropped back again so the oza board asked means they again they got a word to ask the oza board this man felt it meaningless so he wanted to move from that place but when he tried to move from there he observed that his finger got stuck up to the board and helplessly he cannot move there because his finger has already stuck up to the board he remained there itself he sat back there itself apparently miss henkel had not heard my protest the thing was going around faster than ever and she was reading the message silently with her bro corrugated and the light of the hunters in her pale blue eyes why she says it's you mr hello what does she mean oza won't you tell us who is talking i groaned but that inexorable board continued to spell i always did hate a spelling match miss henkel was again followed it aloud h e l e n helen she raised her voice until it could be heard at the outer end of the room lavinia dear do you know anyone by the name of helen but the name of i can't hear you and my wife made her way over us between the book club's chairs you know the funniest thing has happened she whispered excitedly someone had been trying to communicate with john through mrs hans and mrs parkles oza someone by the name of helen so finally when they are re re receiving these letters and they are combining into the words this lady questioned the oza board that who is that trying to talk to them finally they gave the spelling h e l e n helen so she shouted aloud helen asking the lavinia does she know anyone named helen so lavinia came running there and finally they came to a conclusion that a person named helenia helen is trying to talk to them through oza board why isn't that curious what is miss ankel simpered someone giving the name of helen has just been calling for your husband here so from another board one lady called lavinia telling that a person named helen is calling your husband she wants to talk to your husband is the reply what they got from some other board but we don't know anyone by the name of helen so the people who are sitting almost five oza boats are there and all the people are sitting in pairs there so everywhere from everywhere from all the oza boards so there is a word telling that the people are asking for the narrator a person is asking for the narrator and the person's name they refer it as helen so listening to this these people means the narrator and narrator's wife they were shocked because they don't know anyone named helen so like the, this is the reason they are telling that but we don't know anyone by the name of helen they said that they don't know any person by the name of helen lavinia stopped and began to look at me through narrowed lids much as she had done in the library the evening before see here as you were all very well know that the ladies will be a bit jealous so that's the reason why a narrator got frightened because for the first time when the ghost got appeared in the room where narrator is there narrator doesn't want his wife to see the ghost so in that scene somehow he escaped he is able to escape from that scene but now what is happening here as everybody is calling the narrator telling that a person named a ghost named helen is asking for the narrator so listening to this lavinia she got very angry and she is looking in a different way towards her husband and then from different parts of the room other manipulators began to report every plot one of those five oza boards was calling me by name i felt my ears grow crimson 
purple so here from everywhere in the room everyone is calling for one person he is none other than our narrator he is not able to understand he is he is in a position complete dilemma he is unable to understand what to do everybody is calling his name so he here his eyes he felt he felt as if his ears grow crimson purple maroon my wife was looking at me as though i were some peculiar insect so she is looking at him in a very different way in a different look the squeak of oza boards and the murmur of conversation rose louder and louder and then i felt my face twitch in the spasm at the idiotic grin i tried to straighten my wrinkled features into their usual semblance of humanity i tried and as you all very well know the narrator he had a drawback whenever he is under tension there is a nerve which drags one side of his mouth so that it appears an idiotic grin idiotic laugh on his face so in this tension as everybody is calling his name and his wife is becoming so serious so he is getting that grin and he is trying to control his emotions like anything doesn't he looks like said miss hanker and then i got up and fled from the room so he did not understand what to do in that situation so to get rid of this all people and the situation he got up and went out of the room i do not want to know i went straight upstairs and undressed and crawled into bed and lay there in a the burning dark while the last guest girl in the hall below about to the wonderful evening she had spent so here he after leaving the room even he is not interested to pay any attention what is happening there in the room so after going into the going into his room after leaving this place and going into his room he undressed crawl means he went into the bed and laid nicely until the last guest before the last guest leaving also she is very vigorously seriously discussing about the experience what she had that evening so I, until the last guest leave the place he laid there itself on the bed i lay there while the front door shut after her and lavinia steps came up the stairs and passed the door to the guest room beyond and then after a couple of centuries elapsed the clock struck 3 and i dozed off to sleep so finally when the last guest guest went away lavinia closed the door and she went to the guest room and after some time this man went into sleep so he is conscious until the last person leave there house until then he knew after some time the clock struck 3 o'clock and finally he went to bed at the breakfast table the next morning there was no sign of my wife so the next morning see this the previous night ended very horribly for the narrator so he he understood that his wife got angry on him and he did not give any chance for her to express her views and he also try to escape from his wife but the next day morning he is searching for his wife at the breakfast table but he did not find her there i concluded she was sleeping late but gladolia upon being questioned only shook her head muttered something and turned the whites of her eyes up to the ceiling i was glad when the meal was over and hurried to the library for another try at that story so finally he is trying to inquire from the servant maid about his wife he concluded as he, he did not see his wife there near the dining table he concluded that as she go, has gone bed very late the previous night she might be sleeping so he he tried to inquire from the servant maid but he did not get the relevant answer after completing the breakfast he went to the library once again just he sat and tried to write the story i had hardly seated myself at the desk when the when there came a tap at the door and a white slip of paper slid under it i unfolded it and read so when he was sitting there and trying to write the story when he is trying to recollect all his ideas and trying to write the story at that time he saw one paper flying there and he unfolded he opened the paper to see what is there in it 
so in the paper it is written like this dear john i am going back to my grandmother my lawyer will communicate with you later so what is there in the letter there it is addressed the letter is addressed to mr john and it is written by so the words are here uh, like this in the letter i am going to my grandmother so the letter the lady who wrote she's telling that i'm going to my grandmother's house and my lawyer will communicate with you that what we are going to do further ho oh, i cried ho oh, i wish i was dead so john what so what's the fear he had about what he frightened the same thing happened this is the letter written by john's wife so he's feeling as if he's dead there he did not like what happened and that's exactly what you ought to be said that horrible voice from the other end of the room see here here comes the ghost again the ghost got reappeared again and what the ghost is telling from the other end of the room the ghost is telling like this that's exactly what you ought to be so exactly what you should have face the same thing happened to you some words some voice is coming from one side of the room said that horrible voice from the other end of the room from the other end of the room one horrible voice came telling that what should happen to you exactly the same thing happened it's very good like that the horrible voice mentioned there i sat up abruptly means very quickly unwantedly he sat there i had sunk into a chair under the blow of the letter then i dropped back again and my hair rose in a thick prickle on the top of my head coming majestically across the floor towards me was a highly polished pair of thick laced shoes i stared at them in a sort of dreadful fascination and then something about their gait attracted my attention and i recognized them so he is did not like what is there in the letter listening to the voice again finally abruptly of all of a sudden he sat back in the chair and left the letter which is there in his hand and then he is able to see something slowly which is got appearing there starting from the shoes from the feet something is started appearing there see here i said sternly what do you mean by appearing here like this so again see here what is the meaning why are you appearing like this here once again is a question arised now i can't help it said the voice so the voice which is coming from one side as this man is totally under tension under pressure as if his wife is going to leave him and go forever this man is feeling very bad the voice is telling from one side i can't help it i can't help you in any of the way which seemed to come from a point about 5 and 1/2 feet above the shoes see by this time the voice is coming but the appearance of the ghost is not completed he is able to see the sh- shoes only and the voice is coming almost 5 to 5 and 1/2 feet above from the shoes i raised my eyes and presently distinguished her round protrude mouth so he raised from the shoes he raised his eyes and finally is able to see the mouth of the ghost from which the voice is coming out why can't you a nice way to act to walk in sections so why can't you help me a nice way you are walking sections wise you are appearing why can't you help me in this matter if you will give me time said the mouth in an exasperated voice i assure you the rest of me will presently arrive but what's the matter with you you never acted this way before she seemed stung to make a violent effort for a portion of a fishy eye and the end of her nose popped into view with a suddenness that made me jump so he is questioning previously you have never arrived like this slowly all as a person you came out and i used to talk but what happened this time so why are you coming like this the narrator questioned the ghost slowly one part after another part the, finally and the nose popped out and which created a sort of sudden excitement to the narrator it's all your fault she glared at me while part of her hair and her plaits cut began slowly to take form 
So here the ghost is criticizing the narrator telling that it is all your part. When the ghost is telling like this slowly a cut and the remaining parts started appearing. My fault. Of course, how can you keep a lady up working all night and then expert her to retain all her faculties the next day? I am just too tired to materialize. So here the ghost is criticizing the narrator telling that it is all your fault. So then the narrator is asking how it will be his fault. The ghost is telling like this, why have you left the lady through all night working out on her own thoughts? It's very difficult to materialize because what he did, the narrator, the last night, as he knew that his wife is upset, he did not try to convince her. He just left her and he went to bed. So, because of, as he couldn't convince her the whole night, she was working on the same thoughts and finally she has taken this decision. This is the explanation given by the ghost to the narrator. Then, why did you bother? Because I was sent to ask when your wife is going to get rid of that Oza boat. So why do you bother about her? And so why do you bother about my wife? The narrator asked. So the ghost is telling that again she was sent here to ask the narrator when his wife is going to get rid of the Oza board. As we all very well know that the ghost already mentioned to the narrator telling that he should not allow any of his friends or the people whom you know not to use that Oza board. So, but his wife only started using. That's why the ghost was sent to him again to inquire when his wife is going to get rid of that Oza boat. How should I know? I wish to heaven I would never see you. I cried. Look what you have done. You have lost me, my wife. You have lost me, my home and happiness. You have, you have. So here he is he's telling, how would I know? How can I tell you when my wife will get rid of the Uza board? It is you. Because of you, I lost my wife, my happiness, my everything. You are the reason for everything. The narrator started blaming the ghost now. Mr. Hallock came from the hall outside. Mr. Hallock, I Gwen, I quit. I don't like no hodos and the steps retreated. You have, you have lost me, my cook. I didn't come here to be abused, said the ghost coldly. I, and then the door opened and Lavinia entered. She wore the brown hat and coat she usually travels in and carried a suitcase, which she sat down on the floor. So here the, the, the narrator is directly abusing the ghost and the ghost is telling that I did not come here to receive abuses from you. I have come here. She is telling something. Meanwhile, Lavinia came there in the dress generally means usually she wears whenever she travels. She came there with a suitcase and she sat there. The suitcase had an air of solid finality about it and its lock lead at me bracely. I leaned from my chair with unaccustomed agility and sprang in front of my wife. I must conceal that awful phantom from her at any risk. She did not look at me or thank heaven behind me but fixed her injured gaze upon the waste basket as if to wrench dark secrets from it. I have come to tell you that I am leaving. She stacked toned. So here the lady Lavinia as she got very angry on her husband she came there telling that she is going to leave him. She took one suitcase and along with that suitcase she is about to leave the house and leave a narrator and grow from that place. As she got very upset the last night and this man did not try to convince her finally she has come to a conclusion to leave the narrator and go forever to her grandmother's house. Oh, yes, yes, I agreed. Flapping my arms about to attract attention from the corner. That's fine. Great. So this man, even though he is tensed, even though he doesn't like his wife to leave the, his house and go, right away when she is telling that she is going forever, he agreed. The man, the narrator is telling like this. Oh, yes, yes, I agreed. Flapping my arms about to attract attention from the corner. 
so what is he trying there he wanted to attract the attention from the corner expecting that the ghost will hide he doesn't want the lady his wife to see the ghost that's why he wanted to send his wife from that place to get rid that she should not see the ghost so you want me to go do you she demanded so wife what is she expecting there as she said that she is leaving the house and going she is expecting her husband to request her not to go instead of that this man readily accepted and telling that it's better you go so again she is asking so you want me to go she demanded telling yeah really is it real that you want me to go sure yes right away change of air will do you good so what the man is telling yes right away you better go it's good if the air gets changed it will uh, change your mood also it's good you go right away i'll join you presently if only she would go till helen could depart so what is he telling okay now you go i'll presently i'll join you so what is his actual intention if if he make his wife move from that place till the helen gets disappeared after that anyhow he will run back of her and he will please her he will please her keeping that in his mind he is telling he is asking her to move from that place i would have the devil of a time explaining afterward of course but anything would be better than to have lavinia see a ghost why that sensitive little woman couldn't bear to have a mouse say boo at her and what would she say to a ghost in her own living room so here what is he thinking in his mind he is telling that okay afterwards somehow i'll tell something and i'll convince lavinia but he doesn't want lavinia to see the ghost in his living room in her living room lavinia cast a cold eye upon me you are acting very cruelly she sniffed you are concealing something from me so lavinia understood why this man is behaving like this she got a doubt that's why she is telling that you are acting very differently towards me and she also understood that this man is trying to hide something from his wife she understood see here the sentence you are concealing something from me concealing means keeping me away you are trying to keep something away from me you are trying to hide something away something from me just then the door opened and gladolia called miss hallock miss hallock i have come to tell you i see dan left this place my wife turned her head a moment but why gladolia i ain't staying round no place long with dame ouza board contraptions i see it of how does eyes done gone is so as you know the slang of the servant maid is entirely different she is telling that she want to leave the place and go from there my wife turned her head a moment but why gladolia is that all you have got to complain about lavinia inquired yes ma'am all right then go back to the kitchen you can use the board for kindling wood so finally so the galenia the servant maid gave the complaint and finally lavinia accepted and she said that she can use this ouza board for firewood ho oh, me touch that thing no ma'am never i'll be the coon to burn it i shouted i'll be glad to burn it so this man felt very happy as the wife accepted to burn the ouza board she got angry see what happened she expected something else and she purchased the ouza board at a discount at a bargaining shop but that thing it is not happened so out of anger she asked the servant maid to burn the ouza board this man felt very happy even the narrator also wants the same so he is telling that i will burn the board gladolia heavy steps moved off kitchen bed so after receiving this gladolia said that okay she went back to kitchen then my lavinia turned waspishly to me again john there is not a bit of us trying to deceive me what is it you are trying to conceal from me so again she came back she did not leave the incident what happening previously already lavinia understood that the narrator is trying to hide something from her now again directly she questioned her husband tell what is he trying to hide from her 
हो मी ओ नो आई लाइट एलॉबरेटली लुकिंग अराउंड टू सी इफ दैट ड्राफ्टेड गोस्ट वॉज कंसिल्ड इनफ शी वॉज सो बिग एंड आई एम रैदर ए स्मॉलिश मैन बट दैट वॉज अ बैड मूव ऑन माई पैट सो ही इज टेलिंग ओपनली ही इज लाइंग टू हिस्स वाइफ observing around the room whether the ghost is totally hidden or not one with one eye he is observing around the room and he is directly lying to his wife john lavinia demanded like a ward boss you are hiding somebody in here who is it i only waved daniel and gurgled in my throat she went on it's bad enough to have you foot over the ovusa board with that hussy Ho oh, the affair was quite above board i assured you my love i cried leaping literally about to keep her from focusing her gaze behind me so she understood you are finally the narrator's wife mentioned that you are trying to hide someone here the matter is not up to ovza boards it is above ovza board who is that you are hiding here so when she poses such a question the narrator he couldn't understand he did not understand what to answer so swallowing his uh, throat he is trying to say some uh, lie he is trying to lie something to his wife but still so this ma- this lady is questioning him directly telling that who oh, the affair was ki- quite about the board it is not about the wolves of board the affair is quite about that i assure you my love she is telling that of course i love you you don't hide anything from me you can reveal the exact truth to me i cried leaping literally about the keep her from focusing her gaze behind me so this man is telling that i love you nothing is there like that i am not hiding anything and he is trying to hide the sight of his wife from the or uh, corners of the room so that she shouldn't she should not see the ghost she thrust me back with sudden muzzle i will see who is behind you where is that helen so he is trying to hide something so that the lady should not see what is hiding behind him but this lady pulling means uh, telling to the man that let me see who is hiding behind you is that the helen who is hiding behind you me i am helen came from the ghost when this discussion is going on between both of them suddenly the ghost came forward telling that i am helen lavinia looked at that apparition that oval eyed phantom in plaid skirt and stiff skirt waist with hair squeaked back and no powder on her nose i threw a protecting has bendly arm about her to catch her when she should faint but she didn't swoon a bored satisfied smile spread over her face see here the ghost came out but this narrator got frightened like anything now he understood that this lady is going to faint seeing that ghost but it is just ironical it is the thing happened there is totally opposite what the narrator was thinking seeing the lady narrator's wife had smile on her face i thought you were helen of troy she murmured so what this lady is thinking that she is th- thinking that it is the lady who is the real helen of troy i used to be helen of troy new york said the ghost and now i'll be moving along if you'll excuse me see you later so now the, now the ghost it is not the real human being she is not that beautiful also to look at the ghost telling like that i used to be the helen of new york telling like that if you excuse me i'll move from this place with that she telescoped briskly till we saw only her hand waving farewell so telling like that again the ghost got disappeared from that place my lavinia fell forgivingly into my arms i kissed her once or twice fervently and then i showered her aside for i felt a sudden strong desire to write the sheets of paper on my desk spread inevitably before me i have got the bulliest plot for a ghost story i cried finally see there is a 
uh, initially the narrator was thinking that it will become a tragedy but when the lady saw the ghost she understood that it is not the real Ellen and she understood what the mistake she had done and they both came together and finally the narrator got a ghost story and he when he got the mind of writing the story so he took some papers and started writing his story.